Hi guys, here I am back with Symbionts. Um, I just wanted to bring you to this screen. It's the first thing that popped up when I loaded up the game. So, yes, we do want adult content. We absolutely do. We would never want to change that. It's perfect just the way it is. Alright. I'll go ahead and do the preferences with you since uh, we are already together. Is that good? I don't know. Alright, so uh, let's begin. I don't really know much about this. We're gonna learn about it together. And also, uh, you know, I don't feel good about not... See, I'm, I'm not gonna be including the lich... lich? The link to the itch. I, I just literally combined the word link and itch. Lich. I'm not going to be including the link to this game in the description because it has... It had PPs just right there. Right on the itch page. Actually, maybe I could link to the safer work version of the game. Okay, I can do that, I think. Because they had two different ones. Okay, I can link to the safe-to-work version of the game, but... If you want the NSFW one... The NSFW demo, then you have to, you know, do a few extra clicks. But yeah. Um... And I think I can link to the Kickstarter too. I don't think there's anything naughty on there. So, you can go to the description if you want to see those things. Um... But let's start. Apparently the game is in English, French, and Russian. Do you want to read the tutorial? Well, it's a visual novel, so I would say no, but the very fact that you asked me makes me want to say yes. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, why would we ever want to skip the scene? Okay, yeah. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks to Starfighter right now. I feel like this is exactly how this is exactly the same background Starfighter opened with. No. <laughs> oh no. It's Tuesday, September 29th, 5066. Actually, if this is the main character, the guy at the title screen, then I maybe should be a little bit more masculine. Um, we landed in the city of Kayama three days ago. Since then, I've been running around, trying to scape, scrape enough credits to repair our ship and secure our next gig. The last transport job didn't go well, and we only received half of the original payment promise for delivering the goods late. That doesn't even cover all the repairs we incurred. Junie, my business partner, also knows the ship's mechanic didn't sound worried. She insists that every time this happened in the past, we've managed to bounce back. She believes in my resourcefulness and negotiation skills, and I can't help but feel pessimistic because of recent developments. Just as I was about to give up for today and head to the local bar, I received a call from our freight broker about an opportunity we couldn't say no to. At least not right now, when we're literally struggling to keep afloat. The amount of credits offered not only covers the ship's repairs, but also ensures a comfortable life for the next four months. The gig sounded simple and straightforward. Provide transport for one passenger and his cargo to Odaria in the DEX-93 system. That's about six weeks of travel on the most secure planetary system in the galaxy. Pirating is virtually non-existent there, and space anomalies have never been reported. It's basically a piece of cake for a pilot. Normally, I avoid transporting passengers at all costs. They're a pain in the ass to deal with at best, and at worst, it could cause me to lose my commercial transport license. We also don't have the real estate or luxuries of a large liner outfitted for traveler's comfort and entertainment. The cost of traveling with us is the same as the big guys. Though, 
which that means that anyone who wants to travel on a small small transport ship has a special reason for it. Hmm. And personally, I can't wait to find out what our passenger's reason is. Moments later, I spot someone walking towards our ship. The tall figure moves with dignity and confidence. Their hand is protectively resting atop a large sarcophagus-like transport crate hovering by their hip. Another couple of smaller crates hover behind. They approach, the, they approach and keep to the shadows, so I have a really hard time discerning their features. Greetings. I take it this is the Emeritat? Affirmative. And you are? Going to Odaria. I was told we could depart immediately. Oh yeah, and this game has full voice acting. At least in the demo it does, so... As long as you support it on a Kickstarter, I'm sure it will. I don't know, I haven't even read the Kickstarter yet. <laughs> the stranger cautiously glances around. Ooh, yes, that wasn't masculine. May I see the documentation, please? I said it in my normal voice. They promptly produce a small chip from their pocket and hand it to me. I scan it with my handheld computer. Mr. Sabo Tato Brave Trigounder Vorda? Just brave is fine. Species Humanoid. Subspecies Odarian. I don't know much about this race. But all I can say is that I've only seen a handful of Odarians in the ports in all my time traveling. It looks like I have a chance to learn more about them, now that I'll be traveling in proximity with one for several weeks. Alright, Mr. Brave. What's in the large crate? That looks like a sarcophagus to you? I don't know, they're aliens, so... What, who am I to judge? I was informed that the sizable bonus fees I paid included a no-questions-asked courtesy. And there it is. These passengers are always up to something. The only question is, how bad is it? Yes, naturally. However, I still can't take you aboard my ship with something illegal. Forbidden substances, weapons, live species, stuff like that. It's none of those things. Check the permits on file. I go through the various permits the passenger has in his travel profile. The crate's permit is one of, is none of the ones I'm used to seeing, and the small print is difficult to read. However, it does mention something about botanical organisms in several places and being legal to own and transport in this part of the galaxy. Oh, it's a plant? Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of plants myself. You'll see that we have many on board. No, My no, name is plant, Dania, uh... by the way. And I'm the pilot of the Emeritat. Oh god, he probably has an annoying Twitter Tumblr where he posts all his plants. I extend my hand towards Brave, amicably. We'll be on the small ship together for weeks, so we might as well try to make friends right away. After some hesitation, the passenger steps out of the shadows and clasps my hand. Only now I'm able to see how breathtakingly handsome he is. Long white hair contrasts beautifully with his light blue skin. He's dressed in an elaborate outfit, reflecting some particular string of the latest intergalactic fashion trends I'm not familiar with. His facial features are Tehran like proportional and elegant, and punctuated by his intense gaze. His eyes are wary, shadowed by something dark though. Also, he looks somewhat tired and maybe a little sick. Can we leave now? Yes, sir. Welcome aboard the Emeritat. If you could please follow me to the cargo bay, we've designated a section for your convenience where you may store... My luggage stays with me. In my room. Well, our guest quarters aren't very large. I strongly recommend making use of our cargo bay space. You'd be much more comfortable that way. I insist. Well, fuck me. I thought it would take a little bit longer before something sketchy comes up with this guy. But honestly, if he wants to stick this huge pod by his bed to trip over, I don't give a shit. Okay, if that's what you prefer. We board the ship and I show Brave to his quarters. 
I want to offer him a tour of the ship, but he doesn't look like he's in the mood for that right now. Still, I don't want him to get lost in case he needs something. Offer him a tour? Alright, well, let's do it. Would you like me to give you a tour? Our ship's not that big, so it won't take long. I won't go farther than this room today. Thank you. Alright, well, fuck you too. You don't come into someone else's damn ship and not accept their tour offer. Just like going to someone's house and not accepting their offer for a tour. Bitch. He promptly locks himself in his room. I guess I can introduce Junie to him tomorrow. With the passengers settled in and the ship fueled up, we depart from the station and jump into space. A few hours later, I do a check of all the systems before setting the nav navigation on autopilot. I can't wait to talk to Junie about our guest. She usually wakes up around this time, so I leave the cockpit and make my way to her quarters. We run into each other in the main corridor. So, tell me all about it. Dude, where do I start? Um. He's mysterious and drop-dead gorgeous. <laughs> and you're drop-dead horny. Ooh, you got those spiky teeth. That I admit. Also, I'm weak when it comes to my type. You know me. Hot people? That's... You're weak when it comes to hot people? Okay. I definitely do. But tell me, does he have glowing emerald skin? Uh, not really. He's blue, and there isn't any glowing in the dark happening, to answer your question. What about his ears? Are they, like, furry at all? Bitch, you asking if he's your species? Not that I noticed. Last chance. A tantalizing scaly tail. A hard no. Unless it's really tiny. Where are you going with this, Juniper? He's beautiful by Terran standards. Luckily for you, it means that both species are probably mutually attracted to each other. It's nature's way of bringing together genetically compatible individuals and encouraging them to mate. Well... In what way are we genetically compatible? Because, you know, we both have a Y chromosome, so... That's sort of an impediment. Hey, you had me at mutually attracted. But... Judging by our exchange yesterday, he's not the mating type. Meaning? Well, I don't know. It's just a feeling. He came off as kind of cold and distant earlier, I guess. Also, I don't know if he even identifies as a he. I do, actually. He and him work for me. Oh my god, stand this king. <laughs> stand these kings not assuming gender and stand him for coming in here and telling us his pronouns. <laughs> oh, visual knowledge is so funny. <laughs> oh, sh oh shit, I didn't notice our guest joining us in the corridor. I hope he didn't overhear our conversation. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Why don't you introduce me to your colleague? R right Mr. Brave, please meet Juniper. Junie, for short. Well, it's actually ju ni per But Terran ears can't pick up some of those sound frequencies, so he settled for Juniper. Yeah, she's my business partner, mechanic, jack-of-all-trades, and I guess a second-in-command of this mighty interstellar vessel. Of course I'm second-in-command. There's only two of us, dude. And, no offense, but the Emeritot's mighty days are over. We're lucky if it holds for another couple of years. Pleased to meet you, Juniper. There's no need to address me as mister. It's just brave. Well noted. You're a Darian, yes? You can't just go up to someone and say you're black, yes? What the fuck? Correct. And you are originally from Tulrorth. Second largest of the Ognuteras moons? My, 
You clearly know your moons. How many are there? Ognaterra has 14, but Toolworth is the only place with my shade of green. Brave, are you by any chance hungry? We were just going to the mess hall to grab something. Oh yes, I'm famished. Also, could you guys show me around this ship sometime? This place looks really cool. So much for cold and distant. Juni shakes her head at me. He totally flipped a switch, didn't he? It's like I'm talking to a different person. He was probably sleep deprived and who knows what else. Yes, of course. I'll be happy to do the official tour for you, Brave. Calling him by his name feels unexpectedly entrancing. I quickly give myself a mental kick for obsessing over the smallest of things about him. Seriously, I don't even know the guy. But first, let's all grab a bite. Jun and I get out our prepackaged meals and pop them in the oven to cook, adding one for Brave as well. Then I catch myself realizing I still don't know what this gorgeous alien considers food. So, what do Odarians eat, anyway? We're omnivores, same as Terrans. The only thing I can think of that grows on Earth that I can't digest is seaweed. It's deadly for my kind. No worries, we don't have any on this ship. Though, I personally miss sushi sometimes. <coughs> Brave looks like he's about to say something only to be inter interrupted by a cough. A very normal Tehran-like cough. What does that mean? What timing? Are you okay, Brave? Danya, get him some water. I get up and fetch our guest a glass of fresh water with lightning speed. He manages to take a few sips, which seems to soothe him. <coughs> yes, <coughs> I'm okay. I might be coming down with a cold again. Oh. You cannot be getting on this flight if you po tested positive, you idiot. Juni and I look at each other confused. I think we both hope it's not contagious or dangerous. Before I got on the Emeritat, I had been traveling on Kayama for over two weeks without much rest. The rainy weather and the lack of sleep really did me in. I should be back on my feet within a couple of days, I promise. Until then, I'll make sure to stay away and wash my hands often. Brave slowly gets up from the bench, intent on leaving the mess hall. No way! You just got here. What's a little cold gonna do to us? If I get infected, it's a small price to pay to satisfy my urge to learn more about our new passenger. Well, you mean to get your dick wet? Junie smirks at me and Brave smiles with relief. Are you sure? Yeah, we are. Our immune systems can handle it. Right, Danya? Sure, why not? What Danya doesn't know is that Adarians have a weak immune system, not well adapted for travel outside their home planet. Really? Yes, that's correct. That's why you don't see many of us outside of Odaria. Odarians who choose to travel bring along an extensive array of pricey medications as preventive measures. Despite that, we're still highly prone to getting sick. But don't you have to be, like, quarantined for, like, ages until you're allowed to, like, not be quarantined, I guess? I, my words are failing me today, but when you go back to your home planet, you'd have to be quarantined for a long time, wouldn't you? Damn. Sorry to hear that. Hope you feel better soon. Thank you. As I said, a few days rest and I'll be as good as new. What do you do for a living? If you don't mind me asking, Brave. Brave lights up at the question. I'm what you call a symbiont expert. Oh, he said it. Junie and I raise our eyebrows, waiting for him to explain. I study mutually beneficial interactions between different species in the galaxy. I'm also occasionally called in to facilitate the adaptation of individuals of different species who have historic symbiotic relationships and are having difficulty establishing those bonds. I'm very familiar with the theory of symbiosis, but it's the practical part that really fascinates me. For example, you have a species of sea creature that lives around a certain marine invertebrate. It feeds on its byproducts and uses its polyps to hide from predators. 
The invertebrate also benefits because the sea creature protects it from its own predators and parasites. Wow, that is pretty amazing. It definitely is. Not only is it incredible how completely different species can adapt to exist side by side in harmony, but also help each other in ways no one can ever anticipate. Brave looks at me enthusiastically, waiting for another question. Looks like we've uncovered his favorite topic. But what intrigues me the most about him is that as when he spoke earlier, I got a distinct feeling that I already know him. There's a familiarity about him that I can't put my finger on. If I hadn't become a pilot, I think I would have studied plants and the ways we can cultivate them in space. Oh no. Two plant dads. Junior's one of the few people who don't mind listening to my plant lectures, so I'm happy to indulge him and ask more questions. Um... Okay, tell me something specific. So, I understand that part of your job is helping individuals from different species adapt if they choose to start a symbiotic relationship on another planet. How do you do that? It depends on the case. My expertise lies with the Odarian environment in particular. Someone who's visiting the planet would have already gotten their vaccines, been screened, and have permits to land. If they're still struggling to adapt to the new environment, then they come to me. We usually do more tests, uh, review their medical history, cross-reference previous cases, and try to find a solution. The answer could be as simple as a special diet, a supplement, or breathing exercises. A supplement? What would be an example of that? Suppository? Well, I consulted with a few Ognoterans on Odaria who had trouble eating most of the food available there. I prescribed them a certain bacterial supplement found on Tulroth. When eaten, this bacteria will thrive in your digestive system and assist the processing of food from different environments. They were skeptical at first, but after only a week of including it in their diet, they were able to enjoy our rice and most of our dishes without discomfort. Guess you have rice everywhere. <laughs> That's interesting. And that solution seems rather specific. How did you figure out that a bacteria which was neither from Ognoterra or Odaria could solve their problem? You say it's from Tulroth, but I've never heard of it before. That particular bacteria worked for similar cases in the past, including inhabitants of Ognoterra's moons and other planets from the Horum galaxy. You would be surprised by how many interplanetary food issues can be solved by ingesting certain organisms. Having more than 2,000 years worth of research at my fingertips helps. Hmm. Okay, something about Odarians. Can you tell me about symbiotic relationships Odarians have with other species? Sure. We have a few widely known ones, actually. There's the Mulotic Aquatic Band, a sea creature native to our biggest sea that feeds off our blood and dead skin in search of iron nutrients. Before our medicine became what it is today, the best way to treat a wound or large cut was to apply them to the area, and they would keep it closed and clean feeding off the blood and dead skin until it fully heals. Oh, we have something like that in Tulworth too. Except we apply it on rashes. Well, it does sting in the beginning, it stops the itching and feeds off whatever's growing on our skin. I'm a bit jealous. We mostly have insects and worms that feed off blood back on Earth, but I'm pretty sure the exchange is all one-sided. Something about Terrans. So, I guess you must have extensively studied all the major species. Most of the knowledge I have pertains to the way my own race interacts with different species. But yes, I've studied a lot of different subspecies of humanoids. And what do you find the most interesting about Terrans? I'm glad you asked. To me, it's their adaptation ability. It turns out that out of all the humanoid subspecies, individuals of Earth are most skilled at adjusting to their environment. That's doubly amazing to me, because that means the potential for a symbiotic interaction and relationship is much higher than any other subspecies. True story, and that's why I partnered up with this guy. <laughs> yeah, we certainly work well together. Well, gentlemen, I have some things to take care of in engineering, so if you'll excuse me for now. Later, Juni. It was nice to meet you, Ju. Ni. Per. Ooh, now I'm impressed. 
And so am I. What a curious fellow. I hope you feel better soon, what Brave. A curious fellow? What is this, the 50s? Junie grabs one of the ready meals and leaves me with Brave. Hey, Danya. The sound of my name coming out of those lips sends a shiver down my spine. Am I really that horny? Can I have one of those dinner plates too? Whoops, I completely forgot. Here you go. It's General So's chicken, Terran specialty. Junie digs it, and I hope you will too. Doesn't have any seaweed in it, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure this will be good. I look at Brave eagerly, throwing himself into his meal as I grab my own plate. I guess the poor guy was pretty hungry. We chat some more over our food about the different kinds of Tehran dishes my new friend is familiar with. Turns out he's had quite a few for someone who's never been to Earth. After we're done eating, I clean up and walk our guest back to his room then retire into my own quarters. What an eventful day. I don't have a chance to fully process my last conversation with Brave anymore before my mind blinks, falling into a deep slumber. Sometime later, I wake up in my bed. I check my watch and confirm I've only been sleeping for a couple of hours. That's quite unusual since I'm a deep sleeper and notorious for not waking up until I'm fully rested. I suddenly remember Brave, whose room is adjacent to mine when I hear something echoing through a small air vent on our shared wall. Okay, Rattlesnake. It's a low hissing sound, coupled with something that I can only characterize as a Terran straining to do push-ups. I crawl out of bed and kneel beside the vent to listen closely. Is it brave trying to exercise? There's nothing wrong with trying to keep in shape. But is it really the best idea when you're nursing a severe cold? The noises continue for the next five minutes or so, and then everything grows quiet again. Not sure what to make of it. I get back to bed. I don't want to assume anything, so I'll check with Junie tomorrow to see what she thinks of this. We've been traveling through space for a few days now. It's been smooth sailing on my end as far as piloting goes. My stress levels have been at an all-time low because flying in a straight line in empty space isn't rocket science. Besides, the system checks and microscopic manual course corrections, there isn't much to do. We also haven't been stopped for checks or passed anything remotely similar to an asteroid field where I'd have to manually maneuver us through. Oh no. I've been back to reading again, watching the wrecks and tending to my hydroponics garden. It's fascinating how plants can grow anywhere, just a little water and the right nutrients. Granted, water is a scarce resource in space, but thankfully we've got a state-of-the-art recycling system to solve that problem. Oh no, they're piss plants! And was that like a little fruit tree I saw? I think I see something growing on the, some fruits growing on the top right little tree. They're piss fruits! Brave seems to be feeling a little better. He's taken to regularly joining me and Junie for meals. Even if he doesn't leave his quarters often, we still get a chance to chat and connect. We always find topics to discuss about each of our humanoid subspecies, which appears to be interesting for the three of us. Contrary to my negative predisposition towards transporting passengers, Brave seems to be one of the easiest and most pleasant on board clients we've had to date. He's polite, never complains about anything, doesn't blast loud music, and doesn't engage in any other activities that would be considered a nuisance for the rest of us on board. I also haven't heard any noises coming from his move room since that one time, so I just never bothered to ask Junie and drop the incident altogether. Speaking of which, she was supposed to meet me here by now. I see Brave in the doorway instead. Hi, Danya. Good afternoon, Brave. Care to join me for a cup of tea? Tea, you know, because it's afternoon. I actually have no idea what time it is right now. 
and space-time just tends to blend together. And I haven't really checked my watch recently. Sure, I'd be happy to. All right, we have some herbal options over here if you're sensitive to caffeine like myself, or the regular kind. What's caffeine? It's a chemical substance that's a mild central nervous system stimulant to most Terrans. Brave looks at me dubiously. And don't worry, it's legal. It's actually naturally contained within most plants that are used for tea production. The caffeine is purposely extracted from the raw materials to be able to produce the same beverage but without the jitters. You seem to know a lot about plants. This? No, that's common knowledge where I come from. I see. Why don't I go for the herbal option without caffeine today? Um, marshmallow roots? Never heard of that, but I'll give it to him. My personal favorite is marshmallow root. It's naturally sweet and often used for treating dry cough and inflammation in the throat and stomach. Sure, that's exactly what I need right now. I quickly produce a mug with hot tea and hand it to Brave. He supports the cup with one hand and puts his palm over mine, which is holding onto the mug's handle. It's gay. Damn you horny bitch. I let go of the cup to avoid causing any awkward tension. However, the deed is already done and the contract sends my horny soul into the land of fantasies. What are you, a pubescent teenager? Damn. So, do you come here often? You know, I would continue, but I think this is where I'm going to end it for today. Um, but I want to thank you all for watching this episode of the demo of Symbiont. In the comments or the description, you can find a link to the Itch page and the Kickstarter page. I'll, you know, discuss the Kickstarter maybe more later. Maybe look through it with you when we finish the demo. But if you want to look at it now, it'll be in the description. So I will see you guys in the next video. I also want to thank my patrons that have supported me at the Aiden tier above, and their names are Eric Ellis, Hooray is My Way, NQS, and Blue Lagoon. So thank you guys, and I thank all my patrons that support me and make it possible for me to play games like this on my channel. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.